is a snapshot picture of a transverse mechanical wave. So this is let us say plus two, this is minus two, this is one. And this point over here is well, let us say this is in centimeters rather than meters. This is traveling with a speed of 25 meters per second. So this is the snapshot of y versus x at t e equal to 0 for a transverse harmonic wave. On a string. So we have to write the equation of the wave. And express the uh, say, the wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. And we have to also find values of x for which the particles have maximum kinetic energy, potential energy. Okay, so through this only we will explore that concept also and I will discuss more about the energy propagating through a transverse wave and then eventually we will discuss about uh, longitudinal waves and standing waves and things like that also. Okay. So just start with this question. Hopefully others will join in by then.
सर फेज फाइव पाइव है सिक्स है प्लस का वेवलेंथ सेट थर्टी सिक्स सेंटीमीटर Okay, so Bhaskar, have you worked out this uh, question? Yes, sir. Okay, so tell me how much is the wavelength? Thirty-six. Uh, why? How are you getting the wavelength as thirty-six meter? ये वाला पॉइंट ट्वेल्व सेंटीमीटर दिया हुआ है ना हाँ सर तो हाउ मच इज ट्वेल्व सेंटीमीटर वाई इट इज कमिंग लैमडा बाई थ्री माई कैलकुलेशन इट शुड कम टाइटली डिफरेंट ओके सो सो लेट 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 मी स्टार्ट विद योर बेसिक्स ओके सो ऑब्वियसली इट इज अ हारमोनिक Wave, so we can start with a general equation. Y is equal to a sine. Let's say we write it as 
tx minus omega t plus pi. And this directly from the diagram, you can see t is equal to two uh, millimeter. Pi 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 by six है क्या? हाँ, pi is pi pi by six. That is correct. ठीक है. तो pi का और दूसरा मुझे क्या दिख रहा है यहाँ पे? That y at t equal to zero is a sine tx plus pi. So that means y at t equal to zero, x equal to zero is a sine pi. And also del y by del t, that is particle velocity at t equal to zero, x equal to zero, should be equal to how much? Minus a omega cos phi. That you can see from here only. So now going back to the wave, you can see that this quantity is a by two uh, plus a by two. But what about this quantity? Is it negative or positive? So if the wave is traveling in this direction. So, kya hoga? next moment it will be like this. It would have become like this because it's traveling like this. So, what about this particle's velocity? The origin pair. Who is going to go up? Correct, Master? Yes, sir. Okay. So, that is a concept. So, this is positive. Okay. So, that means our sine phi should be half. But cos phi should be negative. So five pi by six is the correct answer. Okay. So just a second, my screen has got stuck. Just restart the program. Yeah, so five pi by six is the correct value, as we have said, because. But उसे wavelength तक कैसे निकालेंगे? Sir, wavelength exactly हम बता नहीं सकते, but कुछ कुछ match लगा के आ गया thirty six. Okay, okay. So I tell you exactly कैसे करेंगे? So sine phi is half. And cos phi is negative, so that is telling me that phi is phi by six. So now I'll tell you a simple way how we can calculate the wavelength using phase concept. So now k should become two pi by lambda. Okay, omega should become two pi f. Where we also know that d is equal to f lambda. So this is a known quantity. So we we'll use these things next. Okay. So now we see what is happening here. In the wave equation, so we have this thing like this. Okay. Now this point is in the graph of x versus y. This is twelve. And this is zero, and this is plus a by two, and this is p. Now, if you plot a different graph of y equal to a sine theta, so in graph, me this point is five pi by six, and this point is how much? Three pi by two. Yes, sir. Five by six or one twenty degree. Uh, sorry, one fifty degrees. Or ये कितना है? Two seventy degrees. So इनके बीच phase difference कितना है? Delta theta between these two is three pi by two minus five pi by six. So that is becoming how much? Four pi by uh, two pi by three. Right? Yes, sir. Right. This calculation is correct. तो यहाँ पे क्या होगा? जो फेज डिफरेंस है इन दोनों पॉइंट्स के बीच डेल्टा फाइव वो कितना होगा के इंटू ट्वेल्व सेंटीमीटर होगा सो दैट शुड बी हाउ मच दैट शुड बी टू फाइव बाई थ्री और यू कैन सी दैट इज के के कितना है टू फाइव बाई लैमडा इंटू डेल्टा एक्स 
so yeah your delta phi is 2 pi by 3 so delta x should be lambda by 3 so your delta x which is 12 centimeters should be equal to lambda by 3 so lambda is 36 centimeters so that's correct okay so this is the most systematic way of getting the wavelength you know, from two given points understood no master yes sir so, I know one point x1 and the other point x2. You just draw standard y equal to sin theta graph and see the phase difference between those two corresponding points. So, if the phase difference is delta phi, in terms of x, it becomes 2 pi by lambda into x2 minus x1. So, from that, you can estimate how much this is. Okay, so now once you've got lambda, you also know that v is equal to f lambda. So, v I had given you as I think 25, was it? 25 meters per second, so frequency is there. So, yeah, this is also telling us that k is equal to pi by 18 radians per centimeter. And this 25 will become frequency into 36 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. So, frequency will become 25 into 100 divided by 36. So, that I can write as 625 by 9. <clears throat> that is You can write it like this. It is 69 and 4 by 9. Perhaps. That means per second it makes 69 and 4 ninth of an offset. So more important, so our frequency is this much that one, and our omega, which is two pi f, will become 2 pi into 625 by 9 radians per second. So now we have all the information of it. Okay, so that is done. Now we are coming to the part of the uh, energy of the wave. So here <coughs> I will discuss an important concept related uh, to this. So did you try this third part out last time? Of calculating the positions at which x, uh, at x at which particle is the maximum kinetic energy or potential energy? Maximum kinetic energy mean position to hota or potential maximum extreme okay. position. Nahin, beta. So that is the interesting thing about the wave. As the string is uh, twisting like this, no? maximum potential energy bhi un particles ke paas hota hai, jo mean position. Pe. So that is why we say that the energy is constantly dislocated. Okay. So now once you know this concept, you can find out so all these positions. So, here x will be how much? It will be 12 plus 1 fourth of the wavelength. So, it will be 12 plus 9, 21. And then again, this point will be 21 plus half a wavelength. So, 21 plus 18. So, these kind of points and this will be 21 minus 9. So, all the points where we have the mean, the particles are instant at this instant at the mean position. So, that is x is equal to 12 minus 9. That is 3. 12 plus 9. That is 21. Then 21 plus 18, that is 37, and so on and so forth. Okay. So these type of points. They will have both maximum kinetic energy and maximum potential energy. So why that happens, let's understand. But sir, mean position pe to energy K ke form me rata. Mean position pe energy? Kinetic energy ke form me store hota. That you are saying to SHM, right? No, it was standing waves, ka tha, kya, sir. No, no, it was all the things I am telling you. That what you are saying is that when you have a mean position, pe, jab system hota hai, so it has kinetic energy. And when the system has gone to extreme position, it has potential energy. That is a concept of SHM, actually. But in the case of waves, it is slightly different. So when you look at an SHM, what you are saying is 100% correct. It makes sense. Okay. The, when this thing is at the mean position, x equal to 0, 4. At that point of time, the system's energy is in the form of kinetic energy. 
but when it goes to the extreme position from here, that's equal to plus A, or when it comes back to minus A also, your the energy of the system is half K, its maximum square, or half K A square. And therefore, we have energy is equal to half M V max square, that is equal to half K A square, and we know that V max is equal to k omega and omega square is equal to k by m so all that works out that's fine okay but in the case of a wave so let's start by understanding uh, a transverse pulse and how the energy propagates so abhi agar if you visualize a transverse pulse that is traveling that's like this and it's traveling like this so you can see that next instant as the pulse is going to be here so you can see that these wale particles jo hai wo rapidly niche aa rahe hain aur ye particles rapidly upar ja rahe hain theek hai there is ye wale particles extreme position pe hai to unka particle velocity is tending to zero so if i label these set of points so this point in the string is a this point in the string is b and this point in the string is c you can see that particle velocity okay, that is del y by del t where this is my y axis and this is my x axis so this particle velocity is maximum at a and c okay and tending to zero at Because it's at the extreme position, so its y has reached the maximum. So del y by del t should be zero. So therefore, you can say that that the section of the string at E and C has maximum kinetic energy, and at B has zero or minimum kinetic energy. Now about the potential energy. So potential energy over here is which type of energy? It is elastic potential energy. So elastic potential energy, what will happen? It is equal to it has an energy density of half stress into square. Energy per unit volume on the string that is half into stress into strain. So you can also write that as You know, you can write the stress as strain upon Young's modulus, okay. or uh, strain into Young's modulus. So it is half into delta L by L, the whole square into Young's modulus, or you can write it as half of stress square upon Young's modulus. What? But here we'll go with this one. That it is half of delta L by L into uh, whole square into Young's modulus. So now, if you look at the string, uh, we make a sort of you know detailed diagram. Suppose, ये जो है मेरा thread का natural या thread या rope जो भी है, this is the natural state of the thread or rope okay, when there is no pulse passing through. So that time, if I make some markers on this, which are equal distance, they are like this. So this is like a magnified diagram of the thread at a position where there is no pulse. So that's a position like this. Now let's consider a position where the pulse is going through it. So वहाँ पे magnified diagram कैसा दिखेगा? Be like this. And at some stage, this is. Be like this. So you immediately understand that these wave particles are equally separated, but here, here, mean position is actually, but they are going to go up or going to come down, whatever. Here, there is a lot of stretch. Then again, here, there is hardly any stretch. Then again, here, there is maximum stretch. So what is happening is, if this is your natural 
length of some position like dx. Okay. This is also the natural length of some section dx. Now here that has got stretched to some dx plus delta which is basically what it is square root of dx square plus dy square. Or it has got stretched to dx into square root of 1 plus m square where m is the slope. That is dy by dx. Okay. So basically kya ho hai? any section of the thread or rope with natural length dx okay. like this. this. This section has natural length dx. Now when it is part of a transverse wave and wave ka jo bhi shape hai, suppose aisa kuch shape hai. So, wo section of aisa ho gaya hai. So, it has got stretched to dx into 1 plus m square. So, it gets stretched to dx into square root of 1 plus m square. Where m is this dy by dx's value at that point of time t at that value of x. So you can see that therefore points where slope that is dy by dx is maximum have maximum strain or maximum stress or maximum potential energy density. Whereas on the other hand, points at which the dy by dx is in fact zero, they have zero strain, zero stress, and therefore zero energy density. Or potential energy, elastic potential energy. Okay, understood this point, Master? Yes, sir. So, in fact, we can even do a calculation of this. As a calculation, it will become like this that your uh, strain, the instantaneous strain at a point, will become dx into square root of 1 plus m square minus dx upon dx. So here we can use binomial approximation. So your strain is, is about half of m square or half of dy by dx whole square. So your potential energy density that is potential energy per unit volume that kind of becomes half of Young's modulus of that material into this thing. half of dy by dx as our energy density so if you want the potential energy of a section of the string you know which had a natural length dx and the area of cross section of that string is some small a. So that will become half of Young's modulus into dy by dx at that point plus square into area of cross section into dx. And that is the energy of that section at that instant at that time, at that position. Okay. So now based on this you can understand that the pulse is traveling. So these points are stretch maximum. Points in the stretch maximum. So these are having maximum elastic potential energy. This is also having maximum elastic potential energy. Okay. And plus also if the pulse is traveling in this direction, you can see that these points are on their way up. So they are also having maximum kinetic energy and these points are on their way down. They are also having maximum kinetic energy 
and these are also having maximum kinetic energy. So next, by the time the pulse moves to this kind of position, you can see that this energy has now come here, and this energy has shifted to this. So that's how the energy is propagating. And the energy is propagating like this. So energy in the form of both kinetic energy and potential energy propagates to the pulse, which is traveling on this way. So in a continuous wave also, but the same thing is happening. It's a continuous wave is just like a series of pulses, one after the other. So same thing is happening. So for example, in a harmonic wave, Transverse wave. Plus minus whatever this thing is. So now the important thing to understand is that in this sort of a wave also, jo particles extreme position pairs to they are having neither kinetic energy nor potential energy. Or jo particle string ke mean position pair, unke pas maximum kinetic energy bhi hota hai aur unke pas maximum potential energy bhi hota hai. So if at some instant the string is in this kind of state, with the wave traveling like this, so these will be having. This is where all the energy is contained. This, these all sections of the string, they have maximum kinetic and potential energy and these sections of the string have zero, zero energy. Okay. So as the wave is propagating now, next instant other wave shift, okay, aisa kuch ho gaya. You can see that this energy is also shifted from here to here. This energy is shifted from here to here and that energy continues to travel. Now we use a bit of symmetry over here for doing the calculation. So if you take a section of the thread of natural length beams, so that section has mass of mu dx. So it has an instantaneous kinetic energy of half dm into del y by del t a whole square. So its instantaneous kinetic energy is omega square a square sine square kx plus minus omega t plus pi. So as it is moving you can see that its average kinetic energy with respect to time that becomes half dm omega square e square into a sine square omega t wale function ka average. Now you know that sine square omega t function the average over a long time is the same as the average over one cycle and that is equal to half. So this becomes 1 by 4 dm omega square e square. That is the average kinetic energy during one cycle. But every time it reaches the extreme position in the cycle kinetic energy is 0. Every time it's passing through the mean position it's actually half dm omega square e square. Now we will say that by symmetry, the average potential energy is equal to the average kinetic energy. So that is also this much. So the average energy of the particle is 1 by 4 dm omega square e square. And from that we get the power propagating. So the power propagating. That is the rate at which this average energy is propagating with time. Okay. So this becomes half because you have kinetic plus potential. So this also becomes half over here. Dm by dt omega square this square. So you have that formula. Or you can write this as half square root of t into mu into omega square this So this is the power transmitted to a harmonic wave. Yes, I will. 
ठीक है भास्कर जी क्लियर यस सर सो नाउ द सेम थिंग हैपेंस इन अ लॉन्गिट्यूडनल वेव आल्सो ओके जस्ट दैट दिस सो फॉर अ लॉन्गिट्यूडनल वेव again you will see that if we have for example an organ pipe kind of thing through which the wave is propagating so we have the equation s is equal to some amplitude into sin omega t plus minus dx plus phi so again particle velocity is del s by del t so that becomes s not omega cos the same thing like that okay so jahan pe particles aise hain okay jahan pe particles separated out hain okay these are the positions where there is maximum potential energy because there is maximum volume strain so there is maximum volume stress okay but also those are the positions where the kinetic energy is zero so you can see that at positions at which s is equal to plus or minus s not okay we have maximum volume stress and strain okay so we have maximum elastic potential energy density uh bulk modulus and that kind of energy density there is half strain square into bulk modulus that kind of thing. okay but also at these positions my kinetic energy so iske case mein kya hota hai yahan pe kinetic energy maximum hota hai oh, sorry zero ho yeah. gaya because okay whereas at position that which s is zero okay particle velocity that is del s by del t is maximum so potential energy density is zero kinetic energy density is maximum and but by the same kind of logic your kinetic energy of a section becomes half dm into omega square into s not square cos square omega t plus minus dx plus phi so the energy average value again becomes is the average value so again you get the same okay so average kinetic energy is equal to average potential energy is equal to that value 1/4 of so from that we get the intensity as 1 upon area of cross section of that thing into average energy per unit time so the intensity comes out to be that formula half of density into speed of the propagating wave into omega square into s not square and you can of course relate the pressure amplitude with the displacement amplitude so you have that relation
ठीक है सिमिलरली बस गए इन द केस ऑफ स्टैंडिंग वेव आल्सो यू विल सी द एनर्जी कीप्स अल्टरनेटिंग बिटवीन काइनेटिक एंड पोटेंशियल बट एज द एनर्जी अल्टरनेट्स द पोजीशन वेयर द एनर्जी इज प्रेजेंट आल्सो अल्टरनेट्स सो दिस थिंग इज कॉल्ड डीलोकलाइजेशन ऑफ एनर्जी सो दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड डीलोकलाइजेशन और शिफ्टिंग ऑफ एनर्जी this delocalization or shifting of energy happens in the case of a standing wave also so for example in a standing wave if we consider a transverse yes okay where we have a string between two rigid walls Now let us say we have a string which is oscillating, let's say in the third harmonic or something. Sir, harmonic or overtone में confusion होते रहता है. इसका क्या करें? अच्छा, okay. So that also I'll explain to you. Okay. So let's let's do a bit of standing waves. So. So we have both boundaries modes. So this, for example, in the case of transverse wave, the one I was just telling you, both no end jo hai rigid boundaries hai, and in the case of longitudinal waves, it's an open organ pipe. फंडामेंटल में क्या होगा बोथ दीज एंडिव नोट सो देर ओनली वन एंटी नोट इन बिटवीन सो दिस बी द फंडामेंटल फ्रीक्वेंसी केस एंड सिमिलरली दिस विल ऑल्सो बी द फंडामेंटल केस दिस विल बी नोट द बिट पॉइंट विल बी एंटी नोट एंड दिस बी नोट so both the cases lambda becomes how much it becomes l by so lambda by 2 becomes l okay this concept you know na that lambda by 2 is the distance between consecutive notes yes so this comes from the equation of the standing wave so you know this so in the fundamental case this is what happens so lambda not is equal to 2m so fundamental frequency is 1 by 2m into square root of t by mu for this case or 1 by 2 l into square root of bulk modulus upon density or 1 by 2 l square root of gamma r t by m now first overtone me kya hoga it is the next possible situation after this one so the next possible situation will have to be one where you add one node and one anti node to the whole so the same length is now occupying or the same length is accommodating three consecutive nodes with two no anti nodes in between them okay so it is of it's accommodating lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 so in the first overtone mode your lambda is becoming equal to n so the frequency is becoming 1 by l square root t by mu or 1 by l square root of gamma r t by m in the case of the open organ pipe so you can see that the first overtone is becoming double of the fundamental right this is clear beta yes sir so similarly in the second overtone we will have what situation we will have this kind of situation we we'll have three loops you can also count it in terms of loops okay so the the fundamental the whole thing is one single loop the first overtone it is two loops the second overtone it is three loops so like this so number of loops is three and each loop is Lambda by two. 
so in this second overtone mode your lambda becomes 2l by 3 so you can see it becomes lambda not divided by 3 now in the first overtone mode what was happening lambda was l so it was 2l by 2 or it was lambda not by 2 okay and that's why your frequency is becoming 3 times l because it is 3 by 2l square root t by 1 so the general formula you can see over here is that in the nth overtone mode Your lambda n kya ho jayega? It will be l, sorry, two l divided by n. So the frequency of the nth will become how much? So it will be n plus one. So the frequency of the nth will become how much? It will become n plus one upon two l square root t by n, or n plus one upon two l square root of gamma r t by n. So the general formula becomes that the frequency of the nth overtone is n plus 1 times the fundamental. So always remember, fundamental ko jo bhi number se multiply karte hai, usko harmonic karte hai. So for example, if I say f1 is equal to 2 f0 according to this formula, this is the first overtone. And in terms of this thing, it is the second multiple. So it is the second harmonic of the fundamental frequency. So like that, the nth overtone is the n plus 1th harmonic. Just remember this concept. It becomes the n plus 1th harmonic. But this formula is applicable when? This is applicable when both the boundaries are nodes. Okay, so I'm hoping that this is clear to you. Okay. So you should not get confused between what is overtone and what is harmonic. Harmonic ka matlab kya hota hai? It is just the multiple of it's just the multiple of F naught, fundamental frequency. Fundamental frequency ka jo bhi multiple hai, usko hum harmonic kehte hai. So agar fifth multiple hai, to fifth harmonic hai. Agar hundred multiple hai, to hundred harmonic hai. Whereas overtone is to do with the series. The nth overtone that is nothing but the nth number in the series of modes. So that is F0, F1, F2. So that is it. So that is why what happens is when we have a case where one boundary is a node and the other boundary is the anti-node. So when we have a case like this, so in the fundamental mode, what happens is that this becomes a consecutive anti-node node. The string is vibrating like this. Or when we have in the case of longitudinal waves, this is an open boundary, but this is a closed boundary. So the closed boundary becomes the pressure antinode. The open boundary becomes the pressure node. So in the fundamental mode, this is what happens: antinode and node like this. Okay? So if this length is L in the fundamental mode, that length becomes lambda by four. So the fundamental frequency becomes 1 by 4L square root T by mu or 1 by 4L square root of gamma RT by L. But here for example in the first overtone, you have another pair of node and anti-node in between. I have another antinode pair. 
so the spring will be vibrating such that its shape is always between these two so in this case what will happen is this distance is lambda by 2 and this is lambda by 4 so here pe first overtone case mein kya hoga this l is becoming lambda 1 by 2 plus lambda 1 by 4 so it is becoming 3 lambda 1 by 4 so you can see that lambda 1 is becoming 4 l by 3 or in other words lambda 1 is becoming one one third of the fundamental modes wavelength so that means the frequency will also become what three times the fundamental so frequency which is 1 by lambda 1 into square root of t by mu that will over here become 3 by 4 n square root t by mu so here the formula becomes that the first overtone mode is the third multiple of the fundamental that means the second harmonic does not exist okay because the first overtone mode is the third harmonic of f naught so here our series will become like this that fundamental mode are now first overtone is third harmonic the second harmonic does not exist similarly second overtone will become fifth harmonic similarly third overtone will become seventh harmonic and in general our formula will become nth overtone will become 2n plus 1th harmonic so this becomes our general formula okay. when boundaries or ends are anti node and node then what happens is that the formula for nth overtone is 2n plus 1th harmonic. So the frequency of nth overtone mode equals to the 2n plus 1th multiple harmonic of fundamental so here you can see only odd harmonics exist okay Basia, this point is clear okay. so this is the two fundamental basic cases you should remember okay and then if there is something which where there is a force boundary in between then you have to develop this formula yourself so for example if there is a situation like this where you have a string which is like this now let's say this is having a length of let's say whatever six meters but what we are doing is now at a distance of say 2 meters okay. we are also putting the string through a small gap in a wall so this is a small aperture in a wall so that means the point P over here this point will also become a node so now this is a three boundary problem. This, this is becoming a problem where my system is existing. So if this is x equal to 0, this will become x equal to 4 this will become x equal to 6 x equal to 0 x equal to 4 and x equal to 6 are all nodes okay. so now you can see that this distance suppose this i'm writing it as l1 and this distance is l2 so l1 is 4 meters l2 is 2 meters so in any overtone l1 will have to be some integer multiple of lambda by 2 and l2 will also have to be some integer multiple of lambda by 2. Okay. 
So four meters is equal to n lambda by two, and two meters is equal to some other m lambda by two. So here you can see that your harmonic series will be such that n by m is equal to four by two. Or two is two one. So n and m का जो series बनेगा, वो कैसा बनेगा? That will be the first member of the series will be two comma one. The second member of the series will be four comma two. The third member of the series will become six comma three, and so on and so forth. So this will be the fundamental. So the fundamental mode will be when n is equal to two and m is equal to one. First overtone will be when n is equal to four and m is equal to two. Second overtone, now similarly like this, n is equal to six, m is equal to three. Okay. But in any case, now you can see that this will correspond to lambda by two being two meters. So lambda being Four meters. So frequency being one by four square root three by two. This will correspond to lambda being equal to two meters. So frequency being equal to one by two square root three by nine. So you can see that the frequency is becoming second harmonic. Similarly, when you do the calculation here, you will see that second overtone is third harmonic. So generally speaking, the nth overtone mode. Will become n plus one at harmonic. Okay. So this is how you will do the series over here. This was a simple one. Okay, now let's take a situation where something like this is happening. Okay. We have a string whose Natural length is hundred centimeters. Okay. Now what we are doing is at some point p like this. So at this point where x is let us say seventy five centimeters. At the point p x equal to seventy five centimeters. A transverse oscillator along the y-axis is attached. So find the fundamental frequency and the modes or the modal frequencies. At which this oscillator should vibrate to produce resonance or standing waves of large amplitude. In the thread. Okay. So just try this question out. We had, I think, another day discussed a similar kind of thing. So just try this out. How you find out the fundamental mode, and from that the formula for the nth overtone.
answer V by 50. Fundamental uh, frequency.
fundamental frequency you are getting b by 50 नहीं तो यहाँ पे what will happen is the point P will be a node or anti node the point P बासकर should it become a node or anti node sir P तो oscillator देने से anti node होगा ना हाँ सर हाँ बासकर sorry sir P तो खुद ही एक oscillator है ना तो वो anti node होगा ना हाँ correct so P is an anti node so now x equal to 75 is an anti node and x equal to 100 and x equal to 0 are nodes so that is the situation we have to solve for now so node and anti node So 75 has to be some odd multiple of lambda by 4 and 25 also has some to be has to be some odd multiple of lambda by 4. So you can see that 2n plus 1 is to 2m plus 1 has to be equal to 3 is to 1. Okay. So this series of numbers will be this sort of series. It will be 3, 1, then 9, 3, then 15, 5, and so on and so forth. Okay. So fundamental mode may get over 2n plus 1 is equal to Five centimeters is equal to lambda by four, or seventy-five centimeters is equal to three lambda by four. So lambda is equal to hundred centimeters. Right? So your fundamental frequency will be one upon hundred. So it will be square root three by. First overtone mode में 2n plus 1 मेरा 9 हो जाएगा या 2m plus 1 3 हो जाएगा। So 75 centimeters will accommodate 9 quarter wavelengths और in other words 25 centimeters will accommodate 3 quarter wavelengths. So lambda will become 100 by 3 in centimeters. So first overtone frequency will become third harmonic of fundamental. So like this you will see that the frequency of the nth overtone will become 2n plus 1th harmonic of fundamental or 2n plus 1 square root t by u. Okay, Bhaskar, this is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, just in the same problem, I want to demonstrate one thing. That suppose we had put that point, suppose that point P, where the oscillator is present, was at x equal to 60 centimeters instead. Now, see what's going to happen in this case. Just try this out. So I'll just demonstrate a point through this.
Yes, very good, Master. So in this case, what will happen is such does not exist, you know, because after 60 centimeters will have to be equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 4, and 40 centimeters at the same time will have to be 2m plus 1 lambda by 4. So you are looking for two odd numbers such that their ratio should be equal to 3 is to 2. So this is not possible. Number theory wise this is not possible. No, because two odd numbers will always have a ratio which is an odd number is to odd number. So basically, yahan pe, main 60 centimeters position, if I attach an oscillator, it will not be standing waves produce nahi kar paega, which, with sizable amount of amplitude because it will never resonate. Okay. So that, that is the thing. Okay, so Master, hope these points are clear to you. Okay. Now coming back to the situation of energy in a standing wave. So mechanical energy. In a transverse standing wave, for example. So, so for example, suppose I have something that is vibrating in some of one harmonic, one of the harmonics, like it's in second harmonic or first overtone mode. So at any point of time, the string will be like this. This should be actually the midpoint anyway. So kya hoga? Isme, when the string is at a position like this, Let's say t equal to zero. This is what the position is. Okay. So if it is at the extreme position. So kya hoga? kinetic energy will be zero. And where is the potential energy located? The potential energy will be maximum. But potential energy ka localization ka pe hoga? Jaan pe string ka slope jada hai. So yaan par hoga. This is the region which is having maximum potential energy. So these are the regions with maximum slope on the string. So therefore, maximum potential energy density. And whereas the regions near the extreme positions, they are hardly having any too much slope. So these regions will have tending to have minimum or zero potential energy. Now if you look at the same string at a time of quarter time period later. So if you look at the same string shape now. at t equal to t by 4. So kya ho rahe? it's come to the mean position. But the kinetic energy is maximum. Ye wala jo antinode hai, iske particles mean position pe aake, they are having maximum speed. So the particles near it are also having maximum speed. These particles which were at the lower extreme, now they have come to this antinode position. So they are having maximum speed. The particles near it are also having high speed. You can see that this region and this region here near the anti nodes has maximum kinetic energy. Yeah, and the region near the nodes are having minimum kinetic energy. So now the energy of the system is in the form of 
काइनेटिक एनर्जी बट वेर इज दैट काइनेटिक एनर्जी लोकलाइज काइनेटिक एनर्जी मैक्सिमम हो गया है एंड इट इज लोकेटेड अराउंड दूस पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज टेंडिंग टू जीरो here it was the opposite and the potential energy was located where it was located around the nodes so continuously energy is shifting between nodes and antinodes so as the string is going from this to this this energy is shifting in this direction and this direction this energy is shifting in this direction so by the time you come to quarter time period all this potential energy is con converted to kinetic energy but that kinetic energy belongs to which particle these particles now which had no potential energy at all so all the particles near the nodes they have given their potential energy to these particles at the antimoles in the form of kinetic energy now as again these particles go down and reach the extreme position they would have given off their energy back to the positions where the nodes are present it would have given off their energy so that's how the energy keeps shifting between the positions of the nodes and the antimoles did you bhaskar is this point clear yes this is a continuous delocalization of the mechanical energy It's a continuous delocalization, but in the case of standing wave, it happens back and forth. Whereas in the case of a progressive wave, the energy keeps shifting in the forward direction only. But in this way, two no direction may shift further. So you have fixed nodes and anti nodes. Okay, so that is one thing. Now the other thing you can be asked in in such a situation is that you can actually be asked to calculate. the amount of mechanical energy of a string when it is in a standing wave situation the total mechanical energy you can be asked to calculate so if a string of length l is in nth overtone mode the anti nodes having a displacement amplitude of e no then we have to find the energy okay, the mechanical energy of oscillation so here we use a trick that we know that the total mechanical energy at any point of time is the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy which will be equal to maximum kinetic energy because maximum kinetic energy occurs at mean position that is all particles are simultaneously at mean position so at that point of time the potential energy is zero and kinetic energy is maximum so that is when the string is in this kind of a state that the string is straight but obviously if i have suppose i all these points are nodes then some of these particles are having kinetic energy like this some of them are having motion like this so this is the state where the string is having energy in the form of that maximum kinetic energy but potential energy is zero सो ऐसे स्टेट में भी क्या होगा सो आ स्ट्रिंग इज ऑफ लेंथ एल सो दिस लेंथ विल बी ऑक्यूपाइड बाय एन प्लस वन लूप्स ओके सो लैमडा विल बी इक्वल टू टू एल अपॉन एन प्लस वन और ई विल बी इक्वल टू टू पाई बाय लैमडा और दैट इज Pi by l into n plus one. So equation of standing wave क्या हो जाएगा? Will be some maximum amplitude into sine kx sine omega t plus some phase constant. so you can see that when you substitute this value of k over here this value of q you can see that 
d is n plus 1 pi by n. So, ax is equal to 0 at x equal to 0, pi at x equal to l upon n plus 1. Two pi at x equal to two l upon n plus one, and like that, it is n plus one pi at x equal to n. So this is the first node, and this is the last node. So these are the boundaries. X equal to zero, x equal to n are the boundaries, and in between there are n minus one nodes. So in all there are. So in in nth overtone, you will see that in all there are n plus one nodes, okay, including x equal to zero and x equal to n. That is the end points. So in between the ends there are these n minus one nodes. So anyway, now what is happening is that the amplitude at a position x equal to x will be a naught sine kx where your k is so, pi upon n plus 1. This is the value of k. Okay. So the maximum kinetic energy at a point x equal to x will be how much? Half amplitude square into omega square. So it will be half e naught square omega square sine square kx. Understood this term number? Because kya ho hai? Kisi bhi point ka, uh, y kaisa hai? it is half of e naught sin kx sin omega t plus 5. So its speed is this into mu dx. That is the mass. So this, this term is dm by 2 into so you can think of it like maximum kinetic energy or think of it like this, that maximum speed at a point particle speed the maximum value yeah that is del y by delta t the maximum value at a point is amplitude into omega so that is E naught sine kx into omega. So that so this becomes the kinetic energy at a point. Okay. So from here we can calculate the mechanical energy of oscillation of a section of length dx or mass dm equal to mu dx so that becomes this quantity it becomes half dm into omega square into amplitude the square so that is e naught sine square dx That is the maximum time. So now we have to integrate this. Okay, so so while doing an integration like this, total energy can be, we can use that trick that will end up integrating sine square kx dx. This mu will also come outside. Okay, from x equal to zero to x equal to ten. So, here if you substitute kx as some theta, 
so dx becomes d theta by k so you have one more k coming outside so this energy becomes half mu omega square k naught square by k square root sin square theta d theta now when x is equal to 0 your value of theta will be 0 and when x is equal to l what will be your value of theta so you can see that kx is theta no? so at x equal to 0 it is how much it is n plus 1 pi understood this point over time because k into l was how much n plus 1 pi that was the value of k for the nth over here k was pi upon n plus 1 l So sine square theta the average value can now the half of that. So instead of doing this integration, you can just use this that it is half mu omega square e naught square by k into half into this interval n plus one pi. So the energy is simply given by this formula. It is one by four, or you can write it as pi by four. mu by k omega square k naught square and k is again 2 pi or k was again uh, n plus 1 so substitute that over here So that n plus one term will actually cancel out. Just a minute, let me explain this properly. So here, what is coming here? There is n plus one. N plus one pi by four mu by k omega square k naught square this is okay now k is this thing okay. so when you substitute k this n plus 1 pi cancels out and we are left with mu l that is nothing but the mass by 4 omega square e naught square so the energy is 1 by 4 the total mass of the string into omega square e naught square so the thing is you know what is happening here is that if you had if we had mass m in shm with amplitude e naught okay. and angular frequency omega the energy of oscillation would be half m omega square e naught square but here it is half kyo hai? because the amplitude is variable this would have been the energy but in this case Just a moment, I'll refresh the whiteboard master. Again, giving me some errors. Just give me a second. But so just to cut this short, so what's happening is here the amplitude is variable, it's varying according to the sine kx function. So when we write the kinetic energy, no, it's like I mean when we write the energy, it's like averaged out over the sine square function. So that's where that factor half express coming from. 
and that's why ultimately we are getting 1 by 4 m into omega square a naught square. So if you have had this equation, the energy of oscillation would have been like this. If we had a total mass of m in SHM such that everywhere the amplitude is uniform of a naught, so the energy would have been half m omega square a naught square. But in this case, here, the amplitude at any point is actually a naught sine kx come on. Okay. So the energy is going to be half m omega square a naught square sine square kx, the average. So that is why the energy is 1 by 4 m omega square e naught square. Here of course we should understand that m is nothing but linear mass density into the length of this thing. And omega is of course 2 pi into frequency and we are talking about the nth overtone. So the frequency of the nth overtone you know is n plus 1 by 2n square root. Omega is like this pi by L square root 3 by mu into n plus 1. So, this is the angular frequency of the nth over there. So, is the derivation of this formula clear, beta? Yes. So, this is a trick by which you can remember this formula you know, that the uniform amplitude of that, so it would have been half m omega square e square. But here the amplitude is varying. So it's a square sine square kx is average. Okay. And that sine square kx is average is going to give you that value of half because you're going from node to node. So it's over uh, an integer multiple of cycles. So I'll just give you a moment to browse through this and see if there are any else to clarify.
सर यस सर मेथड समझ में आ गया आप नोट्स ले लेंगे तो उसमें से नोट्स कर लेंगे तब तक एक प्रॉब्लम कर दीजिए ना हां ओके सो दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम इज डायरेक्ट नाउ सो यू कैन फाइंड दैट आई सर एक ऑप्टिक्स का प्रॉब्लम था या टेल मी बेटा सर एक पेज प्रिंटेड प्रिंटेड पेज पे एक रेक्टेंगुलर ग्लास ब्लॉक रखा हुआ है और आपको कंडीशन बताना है कि एक भी लेटर नहीं दिखे किसी भी लेटरल वॉल से सॉरी कम अगेन बेटा क्या हो गया ग्लास ब्लॉक रखा हुआ है ऑन द फ्लोर ग्लास रेक्टेंगुलर ब्लॉक रखा हुआ है एक प्रिंटेड पेज पे ओके सो वी हैव अ ग्लास ब्लॉक एंड एक पेज है प्रिंटेड उसके बॉटम में रखा हुआ है ये क्या रखा हुआ है बॉटम में पेज हां प्रिंटेड पेज इसमें लिखा हुआ है ओके प्रिंटेड पेज ओके फाइन और लेटरल वॉल से कुछ भी नहीं देखने का कंडीशन क्या होगा कहां से कुछ नहीं देखने का यहां फ्रॉम सम एंगुलर पोजीशन हां लेटरल वॉल जितना चारों वॉल है उससे और साइड्स का कुछ रिलेशन नहीं पता नहीं सो दिस हाइट इज गिवन नो सर नथिंग एंड दिस साइड लेंथ इज नॉट गिवन ये नहीं कुछ नहीं पता सर कुछ This point should not be visible. Point P should not be visible from side wall. From the side wall. Yes, so where is the point? anywhere on the point P is anywhere on the floor, is it? Ah, anywhere. Okay, but it should not be visible from here. Yes. then we have to consider incidentally like this but here the angle of incident should become more than the critical angle so that it the ray goes off tangentially like this this is the critical case so without further dimensions being given i don't think this problem can be done can you send me the problem beta अभी तुरंत नहीं दे सकते मतलब मेरे फोन का प्रॉब्लम है अच्छा ठीक है व्हेन यू फाइंड द प्रॉब्लम लेटर ना जस्ट सेंड इट टू मी ओके अच्छा डू यू नो हाउ टू डू प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ वेरिएबल रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स यस सर ओके अह सो ज्योमेट्रिकल ऑप्टिक्स यू वांट टू डू सम सम अदर क्वेश्चन समथिंग और यू वांट टू डू अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ वेव्स ओनली सर आज का सेशन इन कर दे अभी एक अह सॉरी बात कर से अगेन सर आज का सेशन यही एंड कर दो ठीक है ठीक है ओके सो विल कंक्लूड हियर टुडे और ये वाला क्वेश्चन तो ढूंढ के ना मुझे भेज देना ठीक सर या नहीं मिलता है तो जो तेरे वर्ड्स में उसको लिख के मुझे भेज देना मैं फिर ट्राई करता हूं उस हिसाब से ठीक है ठीक है सर ओके थैंक्स फॉर अटेंडिंग मास्टर एंड ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सर